In science, we often use our measurements in calculations. So the question is, how do we round our answers? In this lesson, we're going to talk about how we round our answers when we multiply and divide according to significant figures. Please grab a calculator so you can calculate along with this lesson. When you multiply and divide measurements, rounding your answers involves rounding to a certain number of significant figures. So we're going to practice that skill first. We have a bunch of measurements here. We want to round them to a certain number of significant figures. So in the first one, 145.26 grams, using the significant figure rule, dot right if not left, we know that that measurement has originally five significant figures. We want to cut that down to three. And so the one will be our first significant figure, the four is our second, and then the five is our third, and then that's where we're going to cut it. And then the only thing that we have to remember are our rounding rules. So with a two next to a five, we're going to leave it a five. And so this is going to be 145 grams rounded to three significant figures. The next one we want to be two significant figures. And if you look at that measurement, uh, the way that it's written, it is only three significant figures right now. Remember, those zeros are just placeholders. And they don't count as significant figures. So uh, the two will be our first significant figure and the other two will be our second significant figure and that's where we're going to cut it. And we're going to round that two up to a three because there is a five next to it. In the next one it's five significant figures. We want to cut it down to four. One, two, three, four. So there's where we're going to cut it. And there is a six next to the nine. And so we're going to round it up. And we actually have to turn the five into a six because we're rounding up a nine. Now be careful here because this number is 1,460. Our original measurement was 14,000. So we still want everything to be in its same place value. We need to put another zero right here to get everything out into its proper place value. And then we want four significant figures. So we're going to put a bar over the zero in the tens place to make that significant so we can have four significant figures. And I'm just going to add my units. In the next one, we want that to be three significant figures. So one, two, three. That's where we're going to cut it. And uh, we're going to round the nine up because there is a nine next to it. And we're actually going to turn the six into a seven. And don't forget the zero in the tenths place because we want to have three significant figures. And finally, rounding numbers in scientific notation. Just look at this part right here. No need to take the number out of scientific notation. We want four significant figures, so one, two, three, four, that's where we're going to cut that. 1.25, and then we're going to make the four a five because there is a five next to it. And then don't forget the rest of the number times 10 to the seventh and the units. So now we're ready to uh, look at the rule for rounding our answers when we multiply and divide measurements. So basically we want to look at the uh, numbers that we are multiplying and dividing and we are going to round our answer to the lowest number of significant figures. Here I have a sample calculation where I took a mass and divided by its volume. Uh, the number in the numerator has four significant figures. The number in the denominator has three significant figures. And so we want to go with the lower number. So we're going to round our final answer to three significant figures. So one, two, three. This is what we were just practicing. We're going to cut that. And there's a zero next to the zero. So we're just going to leave it a zero. But please write it because we need three significant figures. And include units. Okay, so here are some more calculations. Uh, I have the answers written out unrounded and let's talk about how to round them. Um, we've got 2.4 grams per milliliter times 15.82 milliliters. So we've got two significant figures here and we have four here. 
Uh, when we multiply and divide, we always want to round to the lower number of significant figures. So we're going to take this answer, 37.968, and we're going to round it to two significant figures. So that's where we're going to cut it. We're going to make that a 38. And now let's talk units, because when we multiply and divide measurements, sometimes the units um, get a little tricky. So we're taking grams per milliliter, and we are multiplying by milliliters. So just looking at the units. Um, if I want to make that into a fraction, I can put that over 1. And then you can see with milliliters in the numerator and milliliters in the denominator over here, they cancel. And we are left with just grams. So 38 grams would be our final answer. In the next one, we have numbers that are in scientific notation. And so remember, we just look at the beginning part uh, to determine the number of significant figures. Uh, we have 6 versus 3, so we're going to want to round to 3. And um, let's see, 1, 2, 3, there we go. Now the 6 we are going to uh, turn into a 7 because we have a 5 there. Now our answer is not 857. Okay, we still want everything in the proper place value. So um, all these digits here that we're dropping, we're just going to replace with placeholder zeros. Or you could write this measurement in scientific notation. And we've got uh, for units, meters cubed over meters. Okay, and this is meters times meters times meters divided by meters. So one of the meters is going to cancel. We're going to be left with meters squared. Again, you can write this number in scientific notation uh, for your final answer. That would be fine. But you can leave it uh, as is as well. Now, just a note on how to put numbers in scientific notation into your calculator. There are several ways, but I would highly recommend using this EE key. On a graphing calculator, it's the second function of a comma. And then all you would need to do is, say for the first number, do 6.12433 in your calculator, and then hit that EE key, and then just hit the 6 for the exponent. So EE actually stands for Enter Exponent. And so the EE will take care of the times and the 10, and even like the little caret to raise it up to a power. We can practice this more in class, though. So um, just take a look at your calculator now, and then we'll practice more later. Okay, now we have a little word problem here. We want to calculate the area of a rectangle if the length is 1.34 millimeters and the height is 0 0.7488 millimeters. Uh, so we probably don't do area very often in uh, chemistry, but this is just for practice. So uh, area, length times height, base times width, whatever you prefer to call it, 1.34 millimeters times 0 0.7488 millimeters will give you 1.00. 3392 and we've got three significant figures versus four significant figures so we're going to want to round that to the lower number of significant figures three so that's going to make that 1.00 and then millimeters times millimeters is millimeters squared and so that will be our final answer for that one in the next one, 109.3758 meters squared divided by 195.81 meters uh, gives us this decimal. We have, let's see, seven significant figures versus five. So we're going with the lower number. There's where we're going to uh, cut that, and we get 0 0.55858. And then uh, meters squared divided by meters, one of the meters will cancel out, and we'll be left with just meters. And then 2.05 times 10 to the 4th millimeters times 1.2 times 10 to the 8th millimeters. Um, we get an answer in scientific notation when we plug that into our calculators. And then uh, we just kind of want to look for sig figs here. So we've got 3 versus 2. Uh, we're going to go with 2. So we don't need to take this number out of scientific notation. We just need to make it two significant figures. 2.5 times 10 to the 12th. And then, again, millimeters times millimeters is millimeters squared. 
So now you should know how to round your answers uh, according to significant figures when you multiply and divide. If you do not, please go back and rewatch this lesson.